Okay, parallel and perpendicular lines. So um, we've been taking a look at, well, if you had a line like this, um, how to graph it, what the slope is, um, what different equations are that would describe that line. Today we're going to take a look at how a line compares with another line, um, specifically ones that are parallel, and parallel lines never meet. Um, and so this is sort of a picture, this is actually a symbol that they use in math for parallel lines. Sometimes they put a double little arrow on them, and that shows that those lines never meet. And um, all parallel lines have a special property to them um, with respect to their slopes. So uh, let's just write that down. Parallel lines always have slopes that are equal. They are always the same. And you can see that. If they never meet, then the rise and the run of both of them have to be the same. If they were different, then when they rise and run, eventually they would meet. They'd intersect at some point. Perpendicular ones. Well, perpendicular means meets at 90 degrees. So if you know one slope, the other slope um, can be calculated um, by switching some things around. Um, essentially, so that if you went up a certain amount and across a certain amount, you're now going across and up those amounts. So these would be equal to each other, and these would be equal to each other. And you'll see that one slope is positive, this one in this case, and the other slope is negative. And so perpendicular lines have a special property. So let's state that next. Perpendicular lines turn out to have slopes that are negative reciprocals of one another. And a negative reciprocal is a little bit tough to understand, but um, it's, uh, it's not too bad. So let's take a look at that just for a second, and then we can come back and see that these things do have negative reciprocal slopes. So uh, give myself a little space here. Well, in math, a reciprocal is when you switch the numerator and the denominator of a fraction. Um, for example, if you have two-thirds, um, reciprocal would be 3 over 2. And notice that that works the other way. If you start with 3 over 2 and you switch the numerator and the denominator, you end up with 2 over 3. So those two numbers are reciprocals of each other. A negative reciprocal... A negative reciprocal is a reciprocal, but you also change the sign. So if it's positive, it becomes negative, and if it's negative, it becomes positive. So an example is if you start off with 4 thirds, the reciprocal to that would be 3 quarters, and now the negative reciprocal would be negative 3 quarters. And notice how that relates back to my slope. One of my slopes is positive, and another slope is negative. So um, that's why we use negative reciprocals. If you started off with negative 3 quarters, you'd flip that around to 4 over 3, so switch numerator and denominator, and then switch the sign from negative to positive. Let's take a look at one more example of that. If you started off with negative 8, well, you have to imagine this as negative 8 over 1, and then when you take the reciprocal, you get 1 over negative 8, and then negative of negative 8, or you switch the signs, you end up with a positive. So the reciprocal of negative 8 is equal to 1 eighth. Okay, a few more examples of uh, how we can use parallel and perpendicular lines and some of the questions associated with them. Okay, so here's a question. Um, are the lines y equals 2x plus 5 and y equals 1 half x minus 2 parallel to each other? Are they perpendicular to each other? Or are they not parallel or perpendicular to each other? Um, so, well, y equals 2x plus 5. Let's take a look at what the slope of that line is. Oh, wait, this is in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So the slope is 2. And our other line is also in slope-intercept form, y equals 1 half x minus 2. And so that means this line has a slope of negative, oh sorry, positive 1 half. Oh, I kind of gave it away there. It's definitely not parallel. To be parallel, they would have to be the same. Um, if it's perpendicular, they have to be reciprocals. No, they have to be negative reciprocals of each other. These are not negative reciprocals of each other because they're both positive. So this case is neither. If it was negative one-half, and this was also negative one-half, then yes, indeed, we would have perpendicular lines.
Let's take a look at one more example. So in this case we're writing the equation of the line that's parallel to y equals 3x minus 1 that goes through 9, 0, and we're going to write it into slope-intercept form. So there's a lot of information in here. First of all, we want something that's parallel to this. So, well, this one has a slope of 3, so my parallel, and by the way, that's a nice symbol for parallel. It's a lot faster than writing the whole word out. My parallel slope would also be equal to 3. So in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, I already know quite a bit of information. I know that my slope, for instance, is 3, but I don't know my b value. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. One way is that you can write your slope-intercept form down and you can just substitute, well I know x is 9 and I know y is equal to 0, so when y is 0, x is 9, and then you can solve for b. So 3 times 9 is 27, and subtracting 27 on both sides gives me my b value, therefore my equation is y equals 3x and my b value is negative 27. Or you can use the slope point form. So that's y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And so y minus, oh, we got our y1 and our x2, x1, not x2, oops, our x1. And so that's 0 is equal to m. Oh, we know our m, that's 3, times x minus 9. And y minus 0 is y, and 3 times x minus 9 is 3x minus 27. Oh, and look at that, two different ways to do the same question. I don't mind which way you use. I hadn't showed you the substitution way before, where you start with your y equals mx plus b, put in the information you know, in this case the slope, Oh, and the point, and solve, or go straight to using the slope intercept, uh, sorry, the point slope, slope point method, which I've done uh, in red in this video. Um, it doesn't matter which way you do this question. Okay, one last example. And this question, this example, is about as difficult as I think it can really get in this unit. So uh, there is a lot of information in here and quite a few steps. Write the equation of a line that's perpendicular to 2x minus 3y plus, plus 15 is equal to 0 with a y-intercept of 8, and we're going to write it in general form. So let's start with 2x minus 3y plus 15 equals 0. Um, to be perpendicular to that, I need to know the slope of this uh, equation, and the only way I can really get the slope is to transform this into y equals mx plus b. So let's do that. If I get my y's by themselves, I get negative 3y is equal to negative 2x minus 15 by subtracting 2x and subtracting 15 from both sides, and I divide by negative 3. So the first term divided by negative 3, two negatives become a positive, and the second term gets divided by negative 3, and I get plus 5. I did all that to get my slope, and my slope is two-thirds. Now, if I want a perpendicular slope to that, and this is a great symbol because I don't have to write perpendicular every time, I know that my perpendicular slope is going to be the negative reciprocal of the one that I just calculated for that line. So, continuing this question in green, I now know y equals... Um, mx plus b if I want to go that way, y equals mx plus b, or I could use point and slope, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It doesn't really matter which way you do this question. Uh, the work either way will be about the same. And I know a point that it goes through. I know it has a y-intercept of 8, and a y-intercept of 8 is somewhere up on the graph up here in the y direction and has coordinates. We talked about this already. For a y-intercept, x is always 0, and the y value is 8. So there's my point that this goes through. So I can use 0, 8 now as the point. 
let me create a little bit of space so I can do this question. It doesn't matter which way you do this, you know that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 8, so substitute them in. I'm going to use the um, slope point way of doing it, so y minus, well my y value is 8, and negative 3 over 2 x minus my x value is 0, then I get y minus 8 is equal to negative 3 over 2 x, and I'm changing this to standard or general form, it can't have any fractions in it, so the first thing I do is I multiply each term by 2, that's the common denominator, and so I get 2y minus 16 is equal to negative 3x, and it's much faster, since the x is negative, to bring everything over to the left-hand side. So I add 3x to both sides, and I get 3x and 2y minus 16 is equal to 0, and I now have it in general form, ax plus by plus c, and my c is negative 16, is equal to 0. All right, that's about as hard as they can get for this unit. Um, we are now done all of the information for the unit. Hopefully uh, it's making a lot of sense. If it isn't, come in, get some extra help, or post some comments, and let me know what I can help you with. All right, see you in class.